I'll be honest, this is going to be very on the fly. The, the title of this panel is um, Building OpenStreetMap US Community. Is that right? Is that what it says in the program? So the way I got roped into this is um, at the State of the Map Africa, there was a really awesome closing session where, and this was in Kampala in uh, Uganda in July, where the closing session literally had like half of the attendees up on stage talking about, wasn't this a great conference, now what are we going to do? That This was the first time that that community had been brought together across Africa, and it was a really amazing session, I hear. So I just suggested to the organizers of, of this conference, like, wouldn't it be cool if we did something like that where we got like everyone who has been through two days of this conference really excited, a lot of ideas about the future of our community, and we got, all got up on stage and talked to each other. So I'm not suggesting that we all get up on stage, but what I'm suggesting is that it's not like we don't need to pay attention up there and necessarily pay that much attention to me, though I do have the mic and I'm talking, so you are. Um, but I'd really love to hear from everyone, I guess is what I'm saying. After two days of this conference, like, I know we're feeling tired right now, but like, it also feels pretty good. I mean, it's pretty. I thought it was a pretty good conference. Was it a good conference? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. What communities are represented here? Like we have, not only from. Well, let's just focus on the U.S. That's a big enough place. Like what? What cities? What places are we from? Just shout out. D.C., Chicago, Kentucky, Kent Kentucky Nebraska. New York, Denver, Grand Junction, Oregon, New Jersey, New York, Boston, Canada. So yeah, so this is an interesting one. Um, yeah, there has been some thought about like this being state of the map North America, because a lot of people from it's easier from from Canada. Um, so thinking about where you're, like, obviously all of you are motivated enough to come to this conference for various reasons, and thinking about, like, your communities back home and what's, what's going on in that place in your map, um, what are you excited to bring back? What do you want to do now? What are the things that OSMUS as a whole, like, what can we now do together that you didn't, weren't thinking about before? And I'm just going to start, like, giving the mic away. And hey, how about after you say something, like ask another question of everybody and see, see where it goes. The mic to them. Yeah. Just pay it forward. I'm Brian DeRocher. I run Mapping DC in the DC area. And we just aim to improve OpenStreetMap in the DC area. We don't coordinate with any other company like Mapbox. Um, that's OK. No, actually, there were a lot of employees who have helped us out. OK, so um, the thing that I'm, my takeaway is um, a lot of organizations like mine across the United States use meetup.com. And it's becoming a growing expense. Their rates have gone up, and I need an alternative. So I'm thinking about starting a project that would be a web app where organizations can manage their membership, send out email blasts, um, get the pulse of their membership um, and organize events. And I was wondering if uh, there are other organizations or local groups that are interested in this too. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we were thinking as more and more cities come online, the, the, the cost could be up in the, th in the thousands per year. And um, OpenStreetMap US will reimburse the meetup.com fees, but it's just going to be a non-sustainable model. Oh, great question. Great question. How many people use Meetup? So Seattle, New York, Boston. You're Seattle. Oh, so your project died. Well, that... Yeah. Cool. I mean, I'll, I can just speak. Like, ah. Uh, yeah, it just makes me think, like, what do, we, what do local groups need in order to be successful? And obviously, like, a way of organizing 
your local community online is one of them. And Brian's going to build a great thing for everybody. You? No, I think that's a good question about what uh, local groups need in order to um, build and grow. And what I was just struck by is that one of the advantages of something like Meetup is that it touches um, uh, non-specific mappers, like people that are using a Meetup for gathering in a bunch of other different kinds of contexts. And I think um, as we continue to think about the map um, and the community that drives it, that we need to um, always be aware of bringing, um, you know, making it easier for people to join and, and making it easier for organizations to be part of the community conversation as well. Oh, and my question is for Clifford. <laughs> so we have millions of people that sign up for OSM every day. And we don't really have a way of communicating with them unless they do something in OSM to create a change set. Otherwise, they don't exist. So one of the things we could really use that I've taken away is we need to figure out how to communicate with those people that have never edited and let them know what's out there, all what the meetup groups are, or if we use Brian's new group. Uh, what are you going to call it, Brian? <laughs> we need a name. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the OpenTreeMap.org website is, does a terrifically poor job of welcoming new people. Um, you, get a, you get an email, and then that, that's it. And there's probably something more you could do there. You can't really tell where someone is from unless they've edited or otherwise disclosed that. But um, letting them know that there are other people out there, that it's not just a website, is a really good idea. And what that would really take is, I mean, the, open, the OSMF is the organization which runs the website and in order to be a part of like well what those messages are join the communications working group and start to craft what those look like and then work with someone to do a pull request and that could end up in the website so I'm, I'm gonna, Andy and I have already talked about working together cool so something to, oh I gotta talk in that thing well, we don't, I mean, we're just yeah Andy Andy Allen um, and I've talked today about um, working on the communications piece of it. Um, and I join, encourage everybody else to join in. We need to have a nice message to be more inclusive and let people know what's out there. And so I, I really think, Brian, we could, we could create one just for OSM. Because and, and Paul and, and Chase from the Seattle, Paul and Chase run the Seattle OSM group now, by the way, not me. And uh, we have. How many members? 700 signed up? Almost 800? Um, most of them don't ever participate. Um, it would be really nice to get the people in OSM participating. So the question is to everybody is, how do we get those people to participate? How do I get you all to participate is my question. Yeah, so, what, so whether it's something you've heard or something that's just like been burning on your mind, this weekend, like, this is literally just like a mic. We can talk to each other and figure out what we want to do. Coming out of this conference, we've just spent, like, how many people have to-do lists from all the conversations? And there's a few hands. How many of those, how many of those do, are, like, pertain to, like, um, community organizing, like, in, in where you're coming from? You have one? Yeah, so I don't no, know if, okay. if my opinion counts or not, but um, yeah, I'm definitely looking at, you know, mapathons, organizing meetups, and like you guys have so many great best practices for that kind of thing, and this is all just super valuable information for us, um, for me, and, and yeah, um, I guess I'm supposed to come up with a question, right? Um, we, could, we could do more to-do lists if you don't have questions. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah, what's on, what's on your to-do list for, for community stuff? So I guess we do, we try to do a lot of like map times in Grand Junction and mainly get um, college students involved since it's a college town mainly. 
but we're also not trying to do it just in Grand Junction. We're also trying to reach out to communities in South America, like um, in Argentina. We'll be going to the state of the map there as well and try to engage with those mappers because, like I said before this in another talk, but um, there is a standard to edit OSM, but those other countries, especially in South America, they do things differently. They like things that, their way. So not only reaching out to the people of your town, but also going above and beyond and maybe do Colorado and a Utah meetup once a month or something like that. So that, you know, you travel to another town and then you spend same thing that we're doing here, but, you know, you do a state of the map, Colorado, Utah. You do a state of the map, Wyoming, Utah. And that's just an idea. It's like sister mapping, sister mapping cities. Did you have one? Um, I guess my to-dos are mainly connecting people that I know back home with tools that I learned about here. Um, I'm like, oh, that pile of like images can be dropped into a map or you know, oh, that all that drone footage you ran with all those high school students last summer, you know, we can now put it in open aerial. And so, those are my tools. I mean, my to-dos. In terms of whether or not to like meet up or extra tools for people to organize themselves. I think in some ways um, the best way to achieve impact is, is to show what you're doing and to have people understand more how this makes sense and how it's a useful tool. And then people need to incentivize themselves to engage with what's already here. I think there's actually quite a considerable amount um, and inactive users may always be inactive users until they're sort of like fired up, not that they needed a chat tool, I think. So that's my sort of other side of the coin. Yeah, that's really cool. Like, how do you demonstrate that what your local community is doing is really exciting and something that other people want to take part in? So I'm Emmer, and uh, for the last year I was living in Ethiopia, and uh, as a, it was a privilege to uh, be a part of the OSM uh, Africa community and help organize State of the Map Africa, the f first one held in Kampala. And so at Joffrey, some of you have seen here, uh, and I've been working on coming up with, you know, the, the evaluation of the conference. And so, you know, my list is not, you know, what went wrong, but how, what can we improve? Because um, doing a conference in Africa is a lot different than anywhere else I've uh, been involved in conferences. But, you know, the enthusiasm there was really uh, incredible. And mostly it centered around the football match. I mean, they, they organized a, a soccer game between, against, you know, Uganda against the rest of the world, but um, the, the excitement that happened there, and Africa is an enormous place, but it really is a community. And so, you know, what I'm taking away is that, you know, we can provide, uh, you know, some guidance to help improve for the future. And so I, w I guess I would suggest it's worth uh, emailing or letting the local organizing committee here know about ideas to improve so that, you know, next year we can, we can do it again better. So. I guess I'd like to hear a question, or my question would be, you know, what, what are ways we can make it even better next year? I can't answer your question right now, but I have a couple other ideas. Did anybody want to answer his question? Okay, new topic. Um, I, just, <laughs> I just want to uh, reiterate, what Vanessa, right? I, what Vin Vanessa and Alice, Alyssa mentioned, like we also need good writers to, to tell the story um, like, we got a lot of good mappers, but we need to tell a good story, and you got to be a good writer for that. Um, so we need people like that, too. So my other idea, went back to building the community, something that I learned here at the conference was um, about point of interest completeness, measuring the completeness of a city, and how do you do that? And I found a couple ideas using perhaps like four square uh, points of interest and doing a diff with the map in your local area to find places that are not mapped yet. But also combining that with new tools like the mobile app uh, Street View. No, no, what's it called? Street Complete. How many people have used Street Complete? Okay, a handful. It, it, it is a wonderful app. Um, it, it knows where you are. And um, based on what's around you, it kind of nudges you in the right direction. So let's say there's a restaurant over here. <clears throat> it would prompt you, well, what's the cuisine in that restaurant? And it's so close that you could just walk over there and add that data really easy. And what are the hours? that they're open. So 
I guess combining a bunch of ideas here, even Cliff's idea with a new mapper that comes on board, we know where they are. Maybe they haven't made a change yet, but we know where they're located, I think. Their ID. But what about their home location? They can set one. Okay, well, <clears throat> so if you find in Foursquare that there's a point of interest that's not in your map, and you know that there's somebody who's there, you could introduce that person. You could say, hey, can you go, go and check this out? And use Street Complete. It's just an idea. wanted to bring that question up again like to the surface again the um, how can we improve um, I would I would love to hear w where others are thinking around that whether it's um, as Brian was pointing out with the map and the, the contribution community itself or what we can do better here at the conference next year but um, any feedback or thinking would be really helpful I myself can't seem to answer that so I'll pass it on I think one suggestion was that we'd have a soccer game on the field next year rather than just looking at it all weekend. Uh, as far as improving things, uh, one thing that was difficult for me is matching up the location where we first met with the description, and looking at OpenStreetMap itself, uh, the typical renderings of that. Um, as far as my to-do list, sometimes I go hiking with a group of people and uh, doing some track logs of that and having sort of a trail mapping party. Uh, I guess something's happening like that tomorrow, so I'll do that as a, a learning experiment. How many people have edited Boulder while you're here? That's awesome. <laughs> well done. All I did was made, I, I tweeted that something needed to be edited. I don't know if anyone paid attention because I... <laughs> no, it was uh, on 19th Street, there's a... There, was, there used to be a pedestrian bridge across the river, uh, but I think that got washed out in 2013. But if you look at the map, the bridge is gone, but it's still the approaches are there. So if you don't look too closely, it looks like you can cross there. So Anyway, check out my Twitter if you still want something to edit <laughs> in Boulder. Do we have, oh, cool. So maybe like Cliff, right? Okay, like you were saying that um, you get an email like you're a new user and that's about it. Maybe we can propose that they um, send another email saying that we have Street Complete as other available things that work in collaboration with OSM. And then there you go, like Street Complete will find your location and then it will prompt you to map your area. So maybe push OSM to show other um, resources that we have. Yeah, so wearing my foundation hat on for a second, I think it's it's hard. To, it would be hard on a global scale to get that the kind of. Um, I think the pushback would be, oh well, the the people who signed up, we didn't ask them if they want emails from us all the time, so we can't email them. However, I think with we, one we could fix that, and also I think within the U.S. community, we could probably operate a little bit differently and say, hey, we'll just have a little bit of an experiment, and like if we can identify from analysis of edits, a list of all of the editors in OpenStreetMap who've ever, who've predominantly edited in the US, we maybe we, we could start like figuring out a way of sending messages out through the OpenStreetMap.org website. That would be something where OSM US could like come up with a plan, talk to the foundation, and maybe get some buy-in for it. As <laughs> Yeah, and I'll, I mean, and I'll approve that. <laughs> so this is my first time here. Um, so I feel weird giving like com comments. <laughs> but to go back to your question, and I forget your name. Ebert? E Eber. Eber. Okay. Um, I was... Um, I was fascinated by what everyone was working on and presenting on, and I loved hearing about things from outside of the United States, but we also have indigenous people here and people in need here in the United States, and I was um, surprised that there wasn't more representat representation of work 
working with those types of communities and those types of problems. And I think um, we can find those, and, and if they don't already exist, we can move into those communities and use these tools for those communities here in the United States. Um, so that's what I would think would be an improvement for next year. I don't have a question. Well, I feel like it's a good time to make my pitch for membership. membership. So how many people here have like, like OpenStreetMap? Okay. How, how many people are members of the OpenStreetMap Foundation? If you only had your hand up for one of those questions, I assume it was not just the second one, the first one. Okay. So um, the OpenStreetMap Foundation is the, the, the UK-based organization um, with Global Scope, which runs the servers, holds the IP, is basically responsible for keeping the lights on on the project. And for the small amount of 15 British pounds, which continues to be less and less US dollars, I think it's about 20 US dollars currently, so it's a good deal, you can become a member. And we're currently doing a membership drive with the, the OSMF. So would you like to join? Okay, well, hold on to that. I, you'll, hear, you'll, you'll hear soon. So I, I went to join yesterday, and it gave me two options. And they both cost 15 pounds. And I couldn't clearly see which one I wanted to be choosing. Yeah, so there are, so there are two options which are very poorly presented. Um, one of the not really benefits, but maybe one of the things which we encourage members to do is to help us like, identify those things and improve them. So the, and that is simple as like looking at the sign-up form and suggesting better ways to communicate the concept, which I'm about to tell you, which is as simple as like you have normal membership and associate membership. The only difference is whether you, your address is published as part of the register in the, um, in the UK um, list of members of the OpenStreetMap Foundation. Does that benefit the foundation? No. It's only like, it's basically, it's like a, it's a privacy concern. And so probably the better way of, cons con of like, con of saying that, like, do you mind if your address is, po is, is published in this register or not? Um, yes, and I'll be a normal member. Or no, I don't, or vice versa. Make it more, basically, normal member, your address will be published. Associate member, it won't. But in terms of your rights within the, the organization, no different whatsoever. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a, since the, the, founda the project started in the UK, right, in London in 2004, and so when it came to set up a legal entity, it was also started in the UK. And they have like the peculiarities of the registration, all of the members of, uh, of, this, of the kind of organization that the OpenStreetMap Foundation is, are available for inspection, public inspection. So the associate membership is something we like, created in order to protect people who didn't want their address published. I mean, your rights are to, you know, your different rights are to, to, um, to uh, run for the OpenStreetMap Foundation board, which I encourage you all to do, we, and uh, vote in the election for the board members. And this is important because it gives you a voice in the direction of the project. You do not need to be a member of, to, formally to be in a working group, but it makes a heck of a lot of sense that you are a member of the foundation in order to join a working group. I think it, you know, it makes a heck of a lot of sense when you register for State of the Map US, there's an additional question, would you like to join the OpenStreetMap Foundation? Would you like to join OpenStreetMap US? And it's just a little bit of a, an extra question at that point. The point is, is like, if you care enough about this project to fly all the way here, like, go through this really like, silly looking form, pay 15 pounds, and you have, a, you have an official voice in the governance of the project. And this is super important.
Who's coming to the happy hour tonight? Okay. I'll be at the door. Show me your, your registration email. But um, uh, could you talk a little bit about why um, it's important to be a voting member um, in the community? Like beyond like maybe influencing the technical roadmap of the of the project. There's I think a lot more. I mean, okay, I'll just speak for myself. I think that the Open Street Map um, community, of which we're all a part of, is quite large, um, but the voting membership, and quite large and very diverse, and um, is going in a lot of different and exciting directions. Um, uh, but historically, the voting membership is very small and not necessarily represented of all of the um, kind of work that is presented here. And so it's very important, um, I think, I'll just speak for myself, but it's very important that um, the members, um, the voting members of the um, OpenStreetMap um, project are representative of um, the community that it serves and that the people that are um, elected to um, be the, uh, you know, our representatives are also um, representative of who we are. So I encourage everybody to become members. I also encourage you to become a U.S. member. So that's different than the international membership. Um, each of the you know, geographies, they, they have maybe local chapters. And so what, what we are here today is a celebration of the OpenStreetMap US community. Um, and our membership model is, you know, helps to kind of create this event. Um, we don't keep the lights on um, or the operations, but we do, um, I like pilot many projects um, that I think influence uh, a lot of the decisions that are happening um, and communities that are um, um, being created all over the world. Um, and as a member of the US um, uh, OpenStreetMap community, you can vote f as well for, for the board. So I, am, I don't know what the, the pound equivalent is, but I think it's $20 to join. Um, and whether, like, ask me, but it's also on the OpenStreetMap US website. Uh, ask Brian. Brian is another board member here. So feel free to ask any of us um, if you're interested in joining. And when are elections? Yeah. The, the board for the OpenStreetMap Foundation, the elections are in December. We're doing a membership drive now through November 11. And to close, my final question is, and this may be related to joining uh, the OpenStreetMap Foundation and having your voice heard, if there is one thing that you could see happen within the OpenStreetMap community, just like snap of your fingers, what would you want? I think Brian has like, you know, the, has painted a picture of like this epic organizing tool which is free for the OpenStreetMap community. Let's just imagine like that we can snap our fingers and can you snap your fingers? I'm not very good at it, yeah. Um, yeah, final wishes for OpenStreetMap, OpenStreetMap US, you have no limits on what you, what, what you could possibly wish for, and maybe it can come true somehow with some hard work from, by someone else. Mm. Let's be, let's be, yeah. <laughs> See, I see a couple hands. I'll start from the back, work my way forward, and then we're done. Uh, so, I mean, I guess like in the form of a wish, like I'd, I guess I'd just like to see uh, normal people, um, people who like aren't necessarily related to OpenStreetMap, use OpenStreetMap data. Like just see it used in like the general community, like outside our specific like subset, and I mean that does happen. Like Pinterest pulls in from OpenStreetMap, like Foursquare, other data sources. But I'd like to see like more of it, you know. Yes, yeah, so everyone should be making maps. Okay, go here and then here. So my wish would be that the 
Esri, Bing, Digital Globe, and Mapbox imagery would be aligned and that you would know the image date for a specific spot. Being here, I've seen that all these companies that, uh, not all of them, but definitely a lot, I see a lot of people using OpenStreetMap, making money off of it and not giving anything back. This sort of one-way relationship. Uh, I have a wish that there's some sort of like, and sometimes it's like technical reasons why, like it's just, it's hard, I don't know how to give back. If there's some sort of like committee or working group that specialize in helping companies and groups find ways to contribute what they create with OpenStreetMap back to OpenStreetMap. Yeah, good, good point. Within the foundation, there are corp there's corporate membership, and there is uh, some discussion among corporate members about how to encourage more corporate membership, and that as a vehicle for contributing back to the project in other ways as well. Well, I just heard about uh, the Street Complete app, and I looked it up online, and it's Android only, so I'd like an iOS version to use. Um, not everybody um, uses an Android device. Yeah, I want that too. That I've never used Street Complete, but I, I want it now. OK. Ah, OK. <laughs> um, maybe something, um, ID editor will be a little bit more customizable by user. Um, I do a lot of editing in South America, maybe Middle East, and it changes. POIs that I edit there, like classification of roads, it changes. So if I could customize what I'm, according to the location that I'm editing, um, have some presets that I can just set, restaurants or whatever. Um, it'll make my life easier. I think there's some people around here who are listening. Gender parity. <laughs> 